Okay, and I'm going to do another video here. I hope this is going to help someone as I get these uh, cars back out again, you know, isn't it? We expect things, little things to happen, but a bigger thing uh, turns out is what's going on with this one when I'm driving it. Uh-oh, what's that smell? And it's kind of a sickly sweet smell. Yep, you probably already got it. It's, uh, it's the heater core and the heater core is weeping. Now, being a dealership veteran, having watched these come and go, and beginning in, what, 78 with the A bodies, mutating into the G bodies, and 87 ending with the GNXs. That was, uh, I was right in that era. Anyway, these were quite common. And uh, the way that they're engineered is a shell, basically, on the firewall or that housing, and it houses, doesn't it, the A coil and the, and the heater core. And what uh, engineers did here that wasn't such a great idea while all uh, the water and so on drains down the windshield and fills this uh, big ravine up here, there is, you know, in every car, a, uh, a drain way down in the bottom of the housing. And sometimes they'd even fill up if particulate got be behind that screen there. But anyway, where I'm going with the thought is that when a heater core failed, just blatantly failed, you dump the whole cooling system on the passenger side floor. Then all the juke padding and the carpet, well, not so much the carpet because it had a coating on it, but mainly the juke padding, which was glued to the carpet, just wicked that coolant right up in hell. Unless you're in the Sierra Desert and you put that rug out there for a week, you never get it dry. You can't wash it, really. If you do, then it turns four inches thick. Uh, yeah, then you have to dry it. And how could you dry it? You know, when we were at the dealership, it was just, it was just a mess. You know, we did our best with shop facts and that's all we had to work on at the time. So what I want to do here is be very cognizant of that and be proactive and get that core out of there now. And look, when you think about it, what we've got going on here is really a, a, a literal war between North cold and South hot. And there's a barrier in between the two. And then there'll be a mode door inside the car to path either what? Cool air or warm air, depending on how that door is poised. And in between, some of the insignificant things are when you call up a maximum cold command, you energize the water control valve and what? You get another degree more cool because we're shutting off all hot water. So nothing thermal, or we reduce the thermal in this box and make life a little bit happier. But yeah, this was called, I believe, C60, and we had, uh, what, C65, and then the uh, the buzzer, we called them, the C68. Every time you hit a control and they'd have to rehome. <laughs> the electronic touch control, damn, those were bad. Fortunately, this one wasn't equipped with that. We're all in play, but all pretty much the same uh, the same housings. The automatic uh, feature then, what, had a thermistor to sample compartment air, and it poised all that uh, we're talking about here, heat doors and so on. Instead of being on a cable, it looked at that thermistor and did it electronically. Again, pretty neat for the time. So um, we're going to go in here. Yeah, I have found a, a Delco core, and we want a core that's tall and snaps in anyway the 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 depth the height we want the correct core so we have that void in there if you will filled properly so don't throw a fly by night core in here that doesn't fit that's a little too small or a little too large get the right one for the right result and then everybody north and south here can get along and man when this thing's charged it uh, it it'll freeze your arse off and it'll heat well too it was a good system, uh, all except for dumping the entire cooling system out on the passenger floor. Why didn't you put a tube there and anticipate that, you dummies? And a lot of it, in the perfect world, or if all the stars aligned, it would go down and then drop way out the bottom. And some did, but most of the time, come on, those that remember cars in that era, especially us dealership guys, remember. Oh, boy. And, you know, we just, we dealt with the problem. So let's go in. We'll talk about the do's and don'ts, little things to 
pay attention to, the washer nozzles, the wiper arms, the wiper blades, the wiper stops, this little uh, windshield garnish molding, and then this rubber brow to kind of seal off the dust that meets with the hood when the hood's shut. Just little incidental things amid all the looms and wearing harnesses and stuff. So let's get started and see where we go with this. So yeah, these are all of a type. These quarter inch uh, coarse thread screws. Now what a lot of people always want to know is, listen, how do I know where this motor goes back? And there's the ground, right? In the case, that's your answer. It goes right in a hole, in an indexing hole. And look at this one's never been out, so I'm gonna have to pry it loose. But this you never have to disturb that ground lug right there so let's break this seal because this car's only got seventeen thousand miles on it and get that uh, get that motor out and start freeing things up a bit here trying to hold this and do this all at the same time there Just leave him alone. Come on, where'd you go? I just had you. Okay, there you, there you are. Yeah, there's that lug. See it right there? So you clock him right there. And then you can't go wrong. See that hole? That's the answer to the question. Okay, let's proceed. So now, won't we? We'll take off this... Uh, reveal here and there's several sevens and again I'm trying to I don't have a videographer I'm trying to do this and hold this on and so on and so on and so on and anyway let's get that off now that reveal again I'm only one pair of hands here but we'll get this up and out of here don't scratch that car, or I'll kill you. Let's uh, get that out of the way, and then we'll look at closely, a little more closely at what's going on here. Now, here are some interesting things here, and if you're unsure, I suggest you just take a movie of it. There's a couple of 10 nuts, similar to those of the bumper fillers that hold on these uh, brackets that catch that very reveal that we've just pulled. Here's another one, see them? And those are the only two. And what we're after here is to get into this box. And there's some screws up here. There's some hidden screws we're gonna look at and go into. And this is a screen, isn't it, for uh, particulate so it doesn't go down and the mortar won't ingest it. Keep things clean. There's a lot of dust and crap on there. We'll clean all that up, of course. And then we'll start to deal with this whole top here and separate the halves around the accumulator and the A-coil and that sort of thing. So let's do that. All right, note to self, if there's one thing a dealership Dags and Edition remembers, and I was there during the time with these when they failed just right and left, it's to think elements. Elements always win. Look at what's going on here, what they did down the line. This is diversion. This is to, you know, to shed water. And one would just think, well, how'd that get there? Tear and tear that off. No, 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 leave that alone. And now we're ready to take this mesh drain off here. So when we get a turn of water coming down the windshield, we're gonna follow that water down this ravine and dump it down the bottom of the heater AC case. And maybe we'll even get a chance to see that uh, drain down there when we start to look further at this. But yeah, you know, you got the washer nozzle off and a couple of these brackets and we're ready to pull that screen top off. Let's do that to reveal some screws that hold that cover plate. Hey, I did have to turn on my fan. I'm sorry for the noise. But listen, as surely as the blood courses our veins, you got to be careful with this. He's very old. He's very fussy. So then when we get this out, let's just, there's a little seal on there caught, see? Let's just leave all this alone amid the nature of what went on here 30-some years ago. Pull that off. And 
let's not disturb that nature. Now look, we'll clean this screen all up, you know, but now we're starting to get down to brass tacks, if you will. And how the, the uh, line slopped that goop on there to keep that heater box from not allowing the elements to win. So what we're gonna be after here is to start dealing with some of these tens. And here's where we're getting into a, to a lot of hidden busyness. And these go all around the brow of that box and even down and little dirty secrets and in behind with other ones down in these little ravines in here. And surely as the day is young, if you get forceful and overzealous with this cover, you will break it. So pay note to where all these screws are and, and be sure you know what you're doing here. And you know, anybody, everybody knows what they're doing, but just take it slow and look before you pull. Maybe this will help even in that endeavor. Okay, let's keep going. Gotta get that heat shield off. So he's got a seven back here. He's got a seven here. Now when we start to get these looms off, we're gonna see some screws on the case here. Okay, don't you love people that don't get overzealous with clamps? You don't have to turn a clamp down until you can't feel yourself think. And that's what's going on here, I hope. Yep, there's one. That's the way it should be. Come on, darling. Come to daddy, Anna girl. Ah, oh, God, isn't that beautiful, nice, rich green coolant? And getting nuts with uh, with uh, over tightening clamp. So here's the tool, the snap-on tool with a quarter-inch swivel seven. Again, pardon the noise. It allows you to get him out. I'm gonna see if I can go in on this now. Yep, there he is. See him? Ready to fall right out. Let's get him out and we'll get that plate off and man, life is gonna be a cakewalk after that. So yeah, now look, our heat shield's out of the way. He's off that brow. Some may say, well, look, leave that alone. I don't like to bend and work around things. I'm just, I guess I'm too safe. But anyway, getting on with, uh, with our task here, all around the brow of this housing now, aren't there? There they are, you can see them, are all those screws out. See them? Those are quarter inch, again, with a coarse thread. And some of them are dirty to get out. See how they're all out? All done, right? Wrong! One remains. Let me uncover them a bit and then you'll see it better. Look at them now, there he is, see him? right dead in the middle. Look at him, he's covered up. They sprayed him, of course, to waterproof this, coming down the line. But he is there. You'll break that case. What's the matter with this damn thing? I can't get it off. Oh my God, again, as surely as the blood courses your veins, you gotta look really close at all these screws. And there's a couple other ones we're gonna get up here now. So in other words, look, not to ramble on here, but our overconfidence can be our undoing. Trying to hold the phone and do this all at the same time. Look at him. There he is. And that's just mummified on there. Wow, it's been in there for, you know, look, for so long. So I'm going to have to, I can't get him out. I'll have to get a pair of needle pliers. Anyway, the point of the remark being don't, uh, don't get overzealous. Look. So next, we're going to go after these tens. One. Two, three, boy, they're old, they're great. And lastly, four, another quarter inch screw. And then all around the box, let's check very carefully all around this perimeter and make sure we've got them all off. And that's what these look like. Quarter inch. Okay, let's keep going. All right, down in the well. See in the middle of the screen? And then the last one would be right here, those quarter inch screws. Uh, 
That's what they look like. So there are what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Sorry for the noise. All right, now maybe I can do this. No, don't tell me I gotta pull that hood. No, oh, come on, come on, come on. See, that seal's holding me up. And we're gonna restake that seal. Look at it, but it's still even very malleable. Unbelievable. Very nice. There it is. Come to Papa, baby. I can guarantee you it's nothing but a dust bowl in there. There's no way this car is going to be ever wet ever. Not on my watch. Voila. There it is. So we'll school this up a little bit, police things up, clean it up, that sort of thing, and pick this up for those, that's all of them. Yeah, look at that A-coil. That's just awesome. The air in this one will freeze your arse off, but there's what we're after. There's our heater core, and these leak. And only the Japanese are smart enough have to, not having their, to have their heater cores dump antifreeze and fill our passenger compartments up when ours fail. They thought these things through. And look, I'm as loyal as you are, red-blooded American and all the rest of it, and dump it out on the ground like you should, you know, with a tube. So those of you that know where I'm coming from know that uh, that's a tall order to sometimes get these out. But this should be very obvious what's leaking here, or hopefully, because I know it is. I, I can smell it. So let's get it out. Okay. And before we pull this out, Note to self again, I remember, you know you remember that ground wire I was telling you about. Here he is, and he just ascends out. And here is isn't it, the dust seal is. But listen, um, look at this. Let's think about this a second. We've got a partition thing, and the only thing that separates the two is that very partition and a heat door. And then the max door to recirculate compartment air or pulling outside air, he's down in there too. But we have a war, a little war going on here with one environment in versus the other. Now that mold liner, if you, as you'll see, we'll call it, is coming right off that uh, evaporator. So I'm going to clean that up and get that back on there. But the point of the, the remark being that, look, at, we want to clean this out just like a refrigerator coil. And though we're going to replace the heater core, let's pay close attention to that evaporator core. And... and and keep all these fillers, that little foam filler, you can get that at Meyer or something or at a hardware store, and, and seal off these two enemies, no pun intended, so they don't uh, interact with one another. Just as when you call up a maximum command on your air conditioning, you shut off all the hot water to the heater core. There's the water control valve. Where is he? He's there somewhere. Yeah, he's down there. You know, all these things, you know, to what? Pick up maybe a degree and a half more. So all these things had to be have to be thought through. So you want a good core here, a good OEM core, and not a fly-by-night core, and one that's loose, and, you know, you don't pay close attention to all this. It's just, you know, look, at I'm pretty finite with regard to that. But, yeah, we're coming right along, you know, what? About around an hour here it took to get this apart. So let's go a little further. All right, out she comes, and, yeah. See, the evidence and all the little breadcrumbs, if you will, are there. Look at the bottom. It's, it's weeping. He's allowed. That's okay after, what, almost 35 years. That was fun. Let's do it again. Okay, so look, I mean, here's a no-brainer. Get your shop back out, and what I've done here is do some housekeeping. You didn't really need any, but uh, I cleaned that evap coil out. I've got all these pegs off, this dissolving, um, this is like an anti-fungi lining that goes on the outside of that evaporator core. Remember in that earlier video that was, that had rotted right off and it was in front of that door? 
or in that airway, I guess would be the better way to explain it. So yeah, then we get all this cleaned out. You know, I'll wash it again, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty well set. But look at, see, we need the right heater core for the right application. See that cleat down there? That's what that, that's a resting stool to snap that heater core into place. And I have a proper Delco core we're going to put in there. And again, this example car only has, what, not 18,000 miles on it. So it all came out very nicely. So let's let that dry and come back to it. There's part uh, A. So here's our Delco heater core. There's the number. Find it on eBay. This one was $36.79 for this core. And that's OEM new. And I'm going to... Don't you? I mean, you're going to spray this with Febreze or something that smells pretty good. And then I'm going to find some more of that material to put on that uh, evaporator core. That uh, antifungal material. And quickly, another note to self. I always leave a breadcrumb wherever I go, especially in very inconspicuous places that generally never have to see the light of day again, but someday will. So in 2100, when this is uncovered again in some museum somewhere, when... Uh, I don't know, fossil fueling idiots still drove cars. Somebody will find this note. I'm not going to show you what I wrote, but uh, it definitely says I was here and asks what they are doing here. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. I would love to uncover or unearth something like that in some old carology dig up. So I like to do that. Try that. Okay, and that would leave our core installed. And yeah, I, <laughs> you know, it's, the mind's funny. It's called an immersion evaporator screen that uh, abates mold, because, you know, asbestos is out, mold's in, right? And kills fungi and mold spores. And that's what this was, tacked, tacked with these little pins here. See, that's what's left of that pad. And you, you just push these pegs. Yeah, up. Let's, uh, let's scrub this, clean it up. And I think this was, uh, this is C60AC. Just the manual, you know, rotary selector valve, uh, servos driven by vacuum. And then what? There was uh, C65 was the automatic air. I got that in an A body, a 1980 A body. And then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, C68 was the electronic touch control. Oh, my God. Were we plagued with problems in those things? They, those, those panels would fail all the time. They weren't, uh, they weren't the best mousetrap. But doesn't it, you know, just like the designers on the Titanic uh, worrying about watertight bulkheads when they made the Olympic and Britannic, they soon realized that those same thoughts, gee, we'll never have to be here ever again, will we? Did, in fact, have to be revisited. So what I'm saying there in that remark is that engineers figured, well, who would ever go in here and for what reason? But everything's got to be able to be serviced. So that's why this is a little bit involved you know, we're having to change uh, in this little example, like heater core. So now, well, won't we clean these uh, labels up a little bit? But yeah, that looks a lot nicer. And yeah, to finish that thought, you never say never, especially with engineering, because uh, engineers soon learned that they had to raise those same bulkheads I just talked about on the, on the Titanic. Uh, so the Olympic and the Britannic wouldn't go down. Look at they sank twice as fast. So engineers should never say never. How many examples of never have we seen? Yeah, gosh, that could never happen. I said that when I was a kid when Sonny and Cher's daughter was a girl. I used to admire that young lady. And, you know, anyway, the word uh, sometimes is just a word. <laughs> okay, talking more about never before I go to Neverland. Let's never do this. Let's never forget a screw. These are quarter-inch screws here. Just a quick review. There's one. Two. Three, and we'll go inside here. See them? Four, five right in the center, six in the center, seven, eight, nine, where's nine right there? And then I said 10 before, right? And then you never say never because the count's 11. There's that dirty little guy that was hiding. So he makes 11, and those are the quarter-inch screws. And we already remember, don't we, these, these uh, 10 millimeters here. 
Okay, and yeah, with a little afterthought, see here's where our motor is. And we talked about the wind from the tube up to the rotor on the motor. Pretty clever idea. But something we haven't talked about yet, and that tube emanates from here, is the uh, blower motor resistor. Now, these are heavy, old, crimped nichrome wires. And each leg on the blower switch, in a low, a medium, and a high, are through a resistor or a combination of resistors to poise that speed. And then all the way up full high is energizing, is the energizing of the blower relay here. So the resistors are bypassed and instead we have a one-to-one -one right directly energizing the relay. And uh, when that bridge, if you will, closes, that's a pretty big power district there. Uh, maybe a 10 amp draw when that fan's on high saying maximum cool or something. Anyway, it's as though you just ran it to battery. So again, resistor or combination of resistors with speeds down below there. And then uh, there's a uh, another resistor in line. So the fan's always running. So what? Back in the day, you couldn't exfixate yourself. Rough nader. I don't know. So that's what that is. Nothing particularly hard paying attention to with that there. You don't really disturb anything. A couple of sevens hold that. A couple more sevens hold this. So if everything's all lined up right and you put this in a certain way, look at this. I mean, it just it just falls right into place. So uh, that is, in fact, the case here. And let's, let's now get it cinched down and reverse the uh, removal process. Probably starting with those quarter-inch screws and and uh, watching very carefully that all the lips are sealed. Okay, let's do that. So before we start tweaking everything down in a kind of a preliminary sense of things, see how everything is lining up? Looking right at me. Okay, and just a little footnote, everybody has their way, right? My way is a little micro ratchet here. Look at how teeny this little guy is. And what that affords me is a feel, that feel. I don't want to get crazy here with this when I, when I torque them down. More isn't always better. So these are all cinched up proper. There's probably a torque spec, but come on. I mean, this is the real world, right? There's always a number 11 and a number 13. 11 is, doesn't listen and 13 doesn't, is, is uh, I think, doesn't follow directions. I don't remember what 12 was, but that's what's going on. <laughs> And now we'll get the blower motor, the blower resistor, the blower relay, and start to tidy up things here. Okay, let's keep going. There's our heater core. Okay, and then we're all cinched it down the way that uh, the way we want to be. And I'm going to tuck that seal up there. Yeah, and I put a little RTV on the top of that shelf, and I set a little. You just don't need to go crazy here. And I'm a pretty frugal guy, you know, but um, yeah, Versa seal. Couple bucks, RTV. It's a good little insurance marker, and you know, get it, uh, get it sealed back up. So that's done. Let's keep going. Okay, and then another note to South: these two reveal molding brackets. This one that comes out straight, for lack of a better word, will go in the middle, and then the one with the left angle will go on the end for that reveal. And uh, look at, see that ring. This wants to go back. Let's put them back exactly where we found them. See how we can vary? Well, that'll mean our hole here for the reveal is gonna be off. And look at the ups and downs and stuff. Because the cars get wrecked, you know, and tooling isn't that precise, especially, especially during this era. So what I like to do is I like to tighten this one down first all the way and slip the screen up, and then I gotta go after him last. I'll show you why next. Remember that on disassembly? All right, and that's a good place for a hand nut driver. Those are 7 16 same tin nuts, we'll call them as the bumper fillers. And back down this screen then, this one's tight. We'll go. And look at, that's where it wants to be, right there. Screw hole for screw hole. And now look what we got. A lot of guys would just bend that and, you know, you'll snap it. It's brittle. But look, at it's kind of last thought engineering, I guess. But that's where this wants to be. And go down. 
because everything's all lined up now. So let's tighten him up before we put the screen down, in other words, and then we'll do him after, and let's put him back in the same place I just talked about. So let's do that. See that rotor in there? So we'll hit, I can't show you on video, but we'll hit, uh, we'll hit that rotor, or the armature, if you will. There's a bearing there. I just went right in and got him. So yeah, with some finality, look, I mean, it's just effortless how that turns. And it isn't going to spin, you know, like a sealed bearing or something. These are friction bearings, and they're cindered bronze bushings, if I had to guess. So I'm just saying that get some oil on there. What do you think that hole's for? It's to do what I'm talking about. Nobody will convince me otherwise. Could be for something else, being fair. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's again, that story, and I'm stuck into it. All right, let's get the damn thing mounted. Don't forget, tighten him up. Don't get crazy, but cinch him down. See, he's ready to go. And that's a 10 millimeter. That's probably tight enough right there, but of course I'll take, get a nut driver and tighten it down. Let's do that. Okay, again, let's remember the peg, right? The ground peg? There he goes, and he falls right in. So let's get those uh, mounting screws in. They're all like. And were those sevens? Yeah, I think they were. They're very coarse screws. And then we'll get the resistor in and the relay and the other brackets in. Okay, let's not forget here that there's another reason that we pay attention to that ground and that brow and, and there's a peg, a plastic peg. And that's for our cooling hose. And look at, there he is, right there. So we do have to clock this in a certain place. Uh, back in the time in the business, you could force a motor to fit, you know, and then often as not it would overheat because it didn't have that cooling tube on it. And then others, we had to cut open fenders or take fenders off, you know, to get these motors out. And that wasn't, uh, you know, that wasn't the best of times, but uh, kind of a bad memory, but not this car. So let's keep going. Okay, so tidying things up. All the looms, all the little brackets, all the way the wiring's mounted, all the way to the little bracket that holds the A-coil in. He's right there. See that screw right in the middle? All on that um, heat shield. And yeah, my car's still thanking me. Thanks for not molesting me and ruining me with... 20 inch down pipes and whatever. Now look, here's, <laughs> here's that clip I talked about, getting him out. See that little leg? That locks him in and then a seven cinches the deal on the bottom. And there's another one right there, see him? So let's get that on. That's right on the dryer, the dryer bracket right there for that clip. And the wearing is just wonderful. I've heard people talk about wearing decay or something, no. Uh, you know, I mean, this may be an exception example car, but I don't see anything wrong here. So, yeah, a little, uh, a little compulsion. A lot of people would say, geez, what an asshole. Well, maybe. But uh, if you happen to buy my car, maybe I'm your kind of asshole. <laughs> so, think on that a second. Yeah, works for me. Okay, let's keep going. Wow, isn't that exciting? Anyway, you know, these are the days of the good transmissions. These arms only index at one place at one point. Today's cars are on a spline and you need like a battery post puller and you can adjust that. And often as not, those nuts loosen up and um, in a back glass wiper example, there are a lot of them are that way and you can adjust them. These we'd have to bend the arm or it was a bent crank arm on the on the motor here, and yeah, that motor's filthy with grease. There you go again with the asshole. <laughs> Just your kind. <laughs> and, um, you know, everything's working nice that way. Now let's watch, if we can, that depressed park feature. Yeah. So when they're wet, they'll clink right in, the, right in place, but isn't that nice? So there you are. And that kind of puts uh, finality here to our, to our job and where we need to be. And everything's all lined up nice. We got the rubber in, the screen's in, everything's back where it was in every loom. And now I get to have a one more little blast and that's with that seven right there. When I put this up and I get to put that one in the very bottom in that heat shield with none of that ridiculous down pipe overdone crap. Okay, and with kind of an epilogue type of a thought here on this uh, 
87 G car. That, uh, as they say, is that. And I hope this helps. And I think pictures are a neat thing. I think our phones are a neat thing. A video helps. And, you know, look, I'm going to put that uh, 7 in yet. Put it up and do that. But I wanted to talk about a blade procedure. For me, there really isn't one. So what I've done here is I'll top that off. And I've done that. And it'll go down a little bit. I'm going to cap them. I'm going to let them draw it out here while I gently massage the upper. Uh, you can't really with the lower because there's a spring in it. Uh, massage that hose as it starts to warm up and I got a little hole what I do is I spot a hole in the t-stent a tiny little hole what sense does it make in other words to fill this with coolant for you to drop it say for in a water pump example put a new t-stent in while you're in there I got 160 degree you're in this one and not have a, a bleed hole so when we put that t-stent in that inlet where this upper radiator hose is right here, that's captive. So there's air in the motor. So what I do is I spot a little 30 second hole in that thermostat as a bypass. So when it starts to fill up, the air then comes and ascends out the upper hose. And yeah, some cars are problematic. Look at the heater core is probably the highest point on the car, but it's pretty aggressive in the way that it pumps. So that's kind of a moot point for me. Anyway, everybody's got their procedure. Everybody has their opinion, and that would be mine. There's nothing really to do here. And then I'll go for a subtle drive, which are all drives. I don't rod my car as much. Sure, I spank them once in a while. It's good for them. Maybe a little swallow of sea foam and a little tickle to loosen them up. I'm there. Okay, and with an epilogue uh, and a final thought, this isn't too bad of a job. And when I, by the way, to clarify... When I say massage, when you just squeeze this hose and massage it and work it, then you draw off the bottle. And look at in the perfect world, and the world isn't always perfect, this is always capped and stays capped forever. This is where we look. And these cars weren't very problematic. Some cars I can remember, you had to jack them up to get air out of the different components, especially G vans with uh, lines running aft to heater cores, that sort of thing. Anyway, this isn't even in that realm and they bleed rather easily. So almost instantaneously, we're gonna draw the liquid we need. It's a good system, it's a good cap, it's a good uh, uh, thing to, to just back that off. And, and yeah, I mean, look at stock stuff makes things a lot easier and um, again, uh, where opinions are. This uh, cold air setup, while I tolerate it and kind of humored my kid, you know, because at least he had some interest in it. Hell, he doesn't even have passive interest most of the time. And I got three of them, three boys. Um, I, I keep my air filter with my 633 air filter uh, handily available. And I can't wait to one day put that back on. He likes to hear the turbo spool up. I don't. <laughs> so... There it is, and that's our job putting in a in a G body uh, heater core, and uh, yeah, again, not too uh, not too bad. Just take it slow, review things, and just look at what's in front of you. And then most most times, that's uh, that's all you need to do. Not that bad at all. The only thing that's a little creates a little mayhem maybe is the shield. And if you want to, you can get around that. Okay, hope that works, and I'd be. Much obliged if you'd consider subscribing and give me a thumb up. And, uh, you know, if not, that's okay too. All right. Take good care. Hope this helps. I'm Tom Z.